In this video, we're going to complete example one. But before we get into this example, we need to have a discussion about what functions and relations are all about. So we'll go to a different slide and we'll start by talking about what a relation is. Whenever you see a relationship existing between variables, then you can call something a relation. Take, for example, the equation below. A relationship exists between the variables x and y. If I know what x is, I can calculate y. If I know what y is, I can calculate x. A relationship exists here. So this equation can be called a relation. Now relations can be represented in many forms. They are not just represented as an equation. I've listed about four different forms below, one of which we've used already, which is the equation, y equals 10x minus 5. Now how would this relation look if it was represented as a written rule? Well, what's happening in the equation here? We're taking a variable x, we're multiplying it by 10, and then subtracting 5. To represent that as a written rule simply means to write it out. My written rule would simply say, multiply a number by 10, here we're multiplying x by 10, then subtract 5. In the equation, we're subtracting 5. Looking at number 3, it says a list of inputs with their associated outputs. Now this might sound new to some people, but it's something you've been doing for a long time now. We're simply going to represent this as a table of values. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down some x values, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is our list of inputs. We input these x values into our equation, and we get our outputs, which are our y values. So the outputs I would get would be y values such as negative 15, negative 5, and so on. So our table of values has a list of inputs, our x values, with their associated outputs, their y values. Finally, number four is our graph. Now, I'm feeling a little lazy today, so I'm just going to paste a picture of our graph. Now, we have used four different methods to represent the same relation. Our relation here shows the relationship between two variables, x and y. We can see these variables in the equation. We can see it in our table of values. When we look at our graph, our axes should have been labeled as x and y. Our written rule didn't use the variables x and y, but we can see that the written rule is the same as the equation and the table of values and the graph. So that explains what a relation is. So what then is a function? Well, relations can be split into two categories. A relation is either a function or it's not a function. So by definition, a function has no more than one output for each input. What do I mean by that? Well, the best way to look at it is to look at our table of values. If I take an input of negative one, how many outputs do I get? I only get one output of negative 15. If I take an input of two, I only get one output of 15. So if it wasn't a function, I would have had more than one output for some or all of these inputs. This relation that we've been discussing, y equals 10x minus 5, is a function. So what does a relation look like when it's not a function? Well, the best way to answer that question is to actually just go into the examples now, because for our examples, we're going to look at some relations, and we're going to state whether each relation is a function or not a function. We will be completing three examples, questions A through to C.
So we'll start with question A. Here it says a car sales dealership pays each employee a $300 retainer as well as $500 for each car that they sell in a week. Here we have a relation that's been represented using four different methods. We've got our written rule, we've got our table of values, our list of inputs and outputs, we've got our equation and also our graph. So let's fill in the table of values. What's a $300 retainer? Well, if you don't sell any cars, your employer will give you $300. It's just an amount of money that you can live off. So if I sell zero cars, I get $300. They make $500 for each car that they sell. So if they sell one car, they get $500 and they get the retainer as well. So they get $800. This will keep going up by $500 each time. $1,300, $1,800, and $2,300. Now the table of values is very useful because we want to see whether we're getting one output for each input or more than one output. And here you can see we're only getting one output each time. We can also see this when we look at the graph. If I pick an input of one, I get an output of $800, which is what we see on our table of values. If I pick an input of two using my graph, I get an output of $1,300, which is also what I see on my table of values. We can see when we look at our table of values and also at our graph that each input will only give a maximum of one output. So this is definitely a function. This is a function. Now some of you may be wondering, what's the point of all this? What's the point of representing a relation as either a function or not a function. Well, in most practical situations, you need it to be a function. If it wasn't a function, it would be useless to you. Let's look at this practical situation here. You notice that we only get one output each time. What would happen if you got two outputs? Let's say for when you input a value of zero, you got two outputs of 300, and let's say you got another one of uh, 500. What would happen if you got two outputs? Well, this becomes useless because now you don't know how much the employee is going to get paid. Do you pay them $300 or do you pay them $500? In most practical situations, you want a function. You only want one output or one solution for every input. I mean, how would you feel if you went for a job and they said, if you work 10 hours this week, we're going to pay you either $50 or $300. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Just give me one amount. Just give me one output. Anyway, let's now move on to question B. This time we've been given an equation, a table of values, and a graph. They didn't give us a written rule, uh, which is fine. So the equation says that y equals plus or minus x. What does that mean? Well, we'll start with an input of zero. If I input zero into my equation, I get plus or minus zero, which is the same as just writing zero. Okay. What if I input a value of one? Well, I'm actually going to get two outputs. I'm going to get positive one, and I'm going to get a second output of negative one. If I input a value of two, I'm going to get positive two and negative two. I'm going to get two outputs. So question B is a really good example of something that is not a function. And the reason it's not a function is because we're getting more than one output each time. You can also see this when you look at the graph. When I take an input of one, I can see two outputs. 
positive 1 and negative 1. When I look at the input of 2, I've got two outputs, positive 2 and negative 2. As soon as you see a situation where an input gives you more than one output, you can straight away say that this is not a function. All right, let's now move on to the last example. This time we have a written rule. We have a table of values, a graph. We don't have the equation this time, but that's fine. It says that Jane rides her bike to the shops, which are three kilometers away. It takes her 30 minutes to travel each way. She spends 20 minutes at the shops. Now this situation has been modeled using a graph, so it's probably easier to take the graph and put it into our table of values. With an input of zero or time equal to zero, I get an output of zero. So zero, zero. With an input of 10, I get an output of one. This is basically saying that after zero minutes, they've traveled zero kilometers from home. And after 10 minutes, they've traveled one kilometer from home. All right, let's fill in the rest of the outputs here. We're going to get two, three, 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 two, one, zero. So when you read the question, you can see that the shops are three kilometers away and it takes Jane 30 minutes to travel each way. So looking at the table after zero minutes, Jane was zero kilometers from home, meaning she was at home. Then after 10 minutes, she was one kilometer from home. It takes 30 minutes to get to the shops. So after 30 minutes, she was three kilometers away from home because the shops are three kilometers away. You notice that after 40 minutes and 50 minutes, she remains three kilometers from home. That means that she's been staying at the shops. That's because she spends 20 minutes at the shops. And then she steadily gets closer to home because she's traveling back home. She's left the shops. So is this a function? Well, yes, because for each input, there is only one output. We never get more than one output. So we can write down that this is a function. Now, some of you might have noticed something quite interesting about this function. You might have noticed that we have certain outputs that have more than one input. Let's take, for example, the output of three. So we'll write that down now. Output of three has several inputs. Okay, we can see that an output of three has an input of 30. We have an output of three with an input of 40 and also an input of 50. So we will write down that the output of three has several inputs. It has inputs of 30, 40, 50, and there's even more than that. So what's quite interesting here is that we can have one output that has more than one input and it can still be a function. So I'd like to remind you of the rule we use to define a function. Basically, for each input, you can have a maximum of one output. But when you go in reverse, for each output, you can have more than one input, and it can still be a function. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets, that relate to this video.